This is an explanation on how to create a master file with multiple images ready for printing. So assuming that you've created all the files which reside in a singular folder. So in my case I have created a folder which has all the files that I would like to print or at least create the file. So the first thing that I wish to do is ensure that the files exist. So I have here 13 files sitting here. You will notice that most of them are in the vertical format with the exception of two images which is this black and white at the bottom and the fourth image on the top right which is of the boy which are in a horizontal format. So let's see how I deal with that. To begin with I'll go into Photoshop and create a new file. The new file that I create should be to the same dimensions as my paper is. So let's assume for the sake of argument that I'm using 11 by 17 inch paper. Please make sure that you input the values correctly and that the unit of measurement that you're using should be appropriate. You're welcome to use centimeters, millimeters, points, picas, pixels, whatever that you wish to. To me, inches and centimeters are the most comfortable one. So I have chosen inches. The other place where you need to be consistent with, whatever unit of measurement that you choose here in the dimensions of the page or the canvas that you are creating, your resolution should also be relevant to that, pixels per inch or pixels per centimeter. So if you had done this in centimeters, please make sure this is set to pixels per centimeter. Even though if you leave it to inches, it's not really going to make a difference. <coughs> the color mode should be RGB. If you have worked your files as a 16-bit file, then it is 16-bit that you need to create over here, or unless you are in the 8-bit mode. Uh, background color should be white. Color profile should reflect exactly the same profile that you have worked your other images. If you work them as Adobe RGB, then make sure this file is also Adobe RGB. If you had worked in sRGB, ensure that this file is also sRGB or whatever other profile you may have utilized. Once you're happy, you hit OK. Now, you will notice that I have a blank canvas here. Okay? And I have activated the rulers just so that I understand what I'm going to be doing. So I have made a decision that I wish to leave one inch border around the top, the left, the right, and perhaps a two and a half inch border at the bottom. So the first thing I want to do is take my cursor to the ruler. If your rulers are not active, go into view and look for rulers and make sure there's a check mark. So if I click on it now, the rulers will disappear. Okay, there's a quick shortcut. You can simply hit Command R on the Mac or Control R on the PC to activate or deactivate the rulers. So the zero marker is here, the zero marker is here, which is implying that it is right at the corner over here. So I'll click in here, and to be very safe and secure, I'm going to enlarge the image a little bit, scroll down, so that I place the guideline at exactly one inch. So there's my top marker. From the left, I come in and place it at one inch. Again, going to the left, clicking and dragging, I place the guideline at exactly 10 inches, which is one inch away. Now, since I know for a fact that my page is 17 inches and I wish to leave, a, let's say, two and a half inch. So two and a half inch would be from 17 to 16 to 15 to 14 and a half. So I come in here and I drop a guideline at 14 and a half. What I have successfully done is placed or identified what the photograph edge would be on my canvas. Once I have done that, there are two ways of bringing in your images. The easier, or let's say one of the ways is you go into File, you say Place Linked, and then point it to the particular folder within whatever directory. So I've placed the 
folder on my desktop which says for print master I open the folder and notice that these are all PSD files so these are all working files with all the layers in them and I click on one and I say place so depending on the file size will determine how long it will take. Notice that now the file is over here and you see that a new layer has been created over here and there's this cross going through simply hit the enter key to apply this or this check mark at the top where my cursor is. So let's say I click on the check mark and the image is here. For you to be able to see better I'm going to enlarge uh, this little icon in the layers palette and this has come in as a linked smart object. What this implies is that if I wish to edit this image all I have to do is double click it here and it should open up the original file with all the layers for further editing but hopefully you have done all the editing and taken care of. So to bring in the next file and I'm gonna size them a little later so I can go back to file and place linked. The other alternative is you simply go to bridge if you have bridge active and I select this image that I wish to place in there now. I right click on it and I say place in the right click menu it opens up a sub menu in Photoshop. So notice that it will behave in exactly the same way and it's preparing a smart object as you can see and once it is done you can again click on the check mark here or hit enter on the keyboard. So I this time I hit enter on the keyboard. Let's see. And again I'm not concerned about resizing it. Personally speaking this is a method that I much prefer over the other methodology. Okay. So I'm gonna go back in here select the next image. Unfortunately you can only do one image at a time. Um, I wish there was a way of doing multiple images simultaneously. It will make life a lot easier and efficient. So let's say I've got now three images and I'm going to go back and this is going to be interesting because this is a horizontal image and my canvas is vertical. From a presentational perspective, I don't want to suddenly flip my layout of the canvas to a landscape just to fit the picture in so I'm gonna leave it for now. Since these are all smart objects I can scale them without really any damage and I'm gonna place maybe one more image just for showing you how things can be done. So we're waiting here just for a few minutes. Now, now that double click it and make sure that this has been applied and the image resides in there. So these some of these files are fairly large so any one of the files could be anything from 300 to I don't know over 1 gig so it takes time depending on the level of processing power and the file size. So don't panic just play the game. Now that I have done it I wish to add a mask first so that everything is hidden and just the image area shows. So what you need to do or what may be a great idea is again two ways of doing it. You could apply independent masks on each image. The preferred choice would be that you select all the images so you go to the first image in the series at the top or at the bottom and then keeping shift pressed go to the last image so that everything is selected. Once everything is selected go into the flyout menu and say create group from layers, new group from layers. So I click on it and it says here so I'm not really gonna name anything and I'll just hit OK. So you notice that here is the group. Now all the images reside within this group. What I now wish to do is actually on this group folder I will create a single mask which will then apply to every image within that grouping. Okay, So I'll take the marquee tool. I have my guidelines which determine the framework of how much of the image I wish to see. So I have placed a marquee and you see the marching ants on the screen very precisely. While I am in this group folder, 
making sure that it's the group that I'm selecting I go into my layers panel and I click on the layer mask icon adding a layer mask and what I have done successfully with a single mask I have created a single mask for all the images now what I need to do is the following I open the group and I am now going to work on each image individually okay so let's say I come and click on the first image and then going into edit and transform and scale make so you notice the image is actually extending all the way up here and to the edges of the paper so I want to scale it within that so to scale it a couple of different ways you can notice that the options while the scale is active you have the width the height and the angle so making sure that everything is done in proportion height and width both what you can do is click on the link so it will maintain the aspect ratio and its vertical and horizontal planes and you can just literally enter a value or bring your cursor on the W and you'll notice that it becomes an interactive tool with a little finger with arrows going left and right so if I click and keep it clicked and I move it to the left I am modifying the scale so that's one way of doing it so I wish to have as much of the image as possible from left to right in the picture so that's adequate now I can simply come in here and keeping shift press so that I don't move it left and right I bring it up and once I'm there I can use the arrow keys to nudge the image up and down a little bit and then apply by hitting the return or the enter key or the check mark up there so one image I have scaled now I'll switch it off and I'll come to this image and I now wish to place this as a vertical image in the framework so once again and I'm going to use a shortcut for transfer for scaling which is command T or control T on the PC command T on the Mac and control T on the PC and to scale it I'll go to one of the corners doesn't matter which one and make sure I'll press shift and option simultaneously and while that's pressed I am going to scale my image to the top and bottom so I kinda like that scale okay but now I need to move the image in so I'm gonna use my arrow keys on the keyboard to simply nudge the image over so if you notice it's nudging over you can also use just the move tool which is the default behavior to move the image appropriately into space so that's about roughly where I want my image and once I'm done I hit the apply button and the image will then reside in there the same thing will happen with the next image I switch off the image that I'd worked on I go to the next image and I wish to again scale it down but this time for the sake of argument I don't want to sort of scale it right in the middle so but I still want to constrain the proportions so as opposed to pressing shift and option simultaneously if I just press shift and I go to the bottom corner because I want to bring in more of this side and while shift is pressed I click on this right node and I say okay I'm gonna bring it in up to here and then I want to bring in a little more at the bottom so again I press shift and I want to do that now next is I don't want his head chopped off so I go to the top left click shift and bring it in so it has scaled it down maybe too much so I want to pull it back just a hint maybe around here and nudge it just a hint to the right because I just want to keep this shirt not from getting chopped off and this cigarette in his hand not being chopped off once done I click on the apply so now I've successfully done three of the images and I've scaled them appropriately then I'll switch it off go to the next image and again I want to fix this bit at the top so I go command T I select it 
and this time I just want to maintain the center so shift and alt option and just bring it in and perhaps just one corner from here and a little bit from here that's good enough and then I'll nudge it up a little bit and then double click and apply it et voila same thing in the last image I'll go here command T or control T on the PC sh shift and alt option which will be uh, same on the ma on the PC which will be shift and alt so I bring it in and click in the middle keeping shift press so that I retain the center I move it up and just nudge it a little bit up and then hit the enter key and here I am done now the whole point of doing it this way is once you run a test on one of your images or whatever it may be um, you may need to make some adjustments which you will potentially wish to apply across the board so depending on the behavior of your uh, test print you may then want to make an adjustment layer let's say for the sake of argument that I want to make a global adjustment layer here so I can come and while I am active in this group I come to my adjustment layer I decide that I want to add a little bit of contrast so I'm gonna add whatever contrast that I want so that my image ends up behaving correctly so this adjustment and I'll share it with you will apply to all the images so for example if I go into the next image and I'm gonna switch this adjustment on and off so that you can see the behavior notice it's applying equally on every single layer so that's one way of doing it so for now I'm gonna delete it and you suddenly decide that no but I just need to make adjustments on individual layers so select the layer that you wish to make the adjustment on go to your adjustment uh, adjustment panel choose the adjustment that you wish and I'll explain what to do so let's say in this case I wish to add a little bit of highlight and perhaps a little more black so that there's a bit more contrast when I print I would like it to be now the problem is while this image is here it's also applying here and you don't really want to be going and switching on and off every single time so that it doesn't apply so what you can do is while this adjustment layer is active you can go to the fly out menu and then say create clipping mask when you do that the influence of this will be exclusively on the layer directly beneath it so if I switch this off notice this goes gray which means that it was only and only associated with this particular layer and the influence will only and only be on this particular layer this gives you more granular control in some ways so that you can actually modify the behavior of every single image individually and once you're done you simply go switching on and off the layers and printing each layer one at a time the benefit is that when you actually go into the print dialog box hopefully all the settings will be retained so you don't have to remember from the one to the next to the next when if you were printing individual files this way it's a collective and it's much easier to manage and in case you wish to make any adjustments in the images let's say for the sake of argument here's an image that I wish to adjust I'll simply notice this is a smart object so I double click on it and it should open up in Photoshop here we go so I say oh okay I need to make some tweaks or whatever I'm going to darken the sky so I'm going to apply a filter on it and I'm going to do uh, um, let's say I want to just darken the sky a little here that's better and I want to do the same so I duplicate my adjustment and apply it here and just reduce the influence area and let's say that I'm done okay so I hit OK as this filter is being applied over here 
this is the change and I think I like it so I'm simply gonna go file save which I'm doing command S or control S on the PC and you'll notice at the bottom it is saving itself so once it is saved I'm gonna close the file having large files will exercise your patience because things may take time so don't panic don't rush don't think your computer is dying just be patient please and now that it has saved notice it says it informs me updating smart object done and I'll go and close the file and once I've closed the file this file has been updated to the current version with the adjustment if you notice the sky has gone a little darker and that's about it hopefully this will make sense and if you have any questions you're more than welcome to get in touch